All right, so here is my proposal. Are you guys ready? Yes. Let's hear it. I know we are not yet at season two, but we're getting there. It's a couple episodes away. I think that for the first couple recording sessions of season two, each week when we record the intro, each of us takes a turn and we're going to bring in our pitch for the new hype song at the beginning of recording. I dig that. <laughs> did you just come up with that now? I did. I did. Everybody seems like they're kind of they're kind of losing steam on Vanga Bus. How many suggestions do we want? Do we want to do like do it for eight weeks and everybody gets to bring in two? Do we want to just do it one and then they're, that's it? Let's just do just bring your best. You know, each of us brings one and then we pick it and that's on that's the rotation for like six weeks. Then at the end of six weeks, oh. everybody brings one again. Oh, I see. I we see. We vote on what the best okay, one is. Okay, so all we're right, going to listen to them all the same day and pick one. Uh, should we get the, the people in on this? Maybe. Maybe we something we could do in the Discord. Oh, yeah. I, I enjoy that. Um, God, speaking of things I enjoy in the Discord, all of the art that Nat is doing. Oh, my God. She started making Discord emojis of the Hero Salad characters, <laughs> and they're phenomenal. So uh, we had mentioned last week that we were going to record a special episode. Uh, if you follow us on any kind of social media, you've seen it by now. But this Friday, we are recording an episode with Michael Sands, which is really cool. Uh, we're really excited to have him on. Uh, so look forward to that in the coming weeks. Uh, also, on June 14th, we are going to do a, uh, a Twitch stream of Tass's game, End of Days. And that will start, I believe, at 9 o'clock that night. I think so. I think that's a later one. So I think that's a 9 p.m. Yeah. And uh, EST. on that, we will have Wes, the portrait dude, who does all of our wonderful photography. He's also been on one of the other streams. And we're going to have Carolyn from Investigate the History. She is in Whoa. town working on a production of Romeo and Juliet. Uh, and I was able to talk her into coming in and playing. So she has to pick her playbook yet, but she will be here as well. So uh, that is uh, twitch.tv slash the crit show. If you want to uh, watch Tass's game end of days. And lastly, it's that time again. Uh, we want to thank our new Patreon subscribers. We have Lisa. I we have Toby and Josh. Josh, who actually was my uh, college roommate, Josh. I won't say his last name for fear of people hunting him down. I know it's Josh. I know. You know. Uh, the Tink Janeer. Awesome name. Yeah, it is. Going to be a villain at some point. Uh, <laughs> Rob W., Justin L., David S., Andrew M., Andrew, who was my first friend at Gen Con. I went to Gen Con the very first year by myself, uh, and he sat and played Pathfinder Society together, and then he saved me a seat when I went and saw uh, the glass cannon with him. Nice. Uh, Christina R., Oren S., Jake R., James S., Lady C., your left sock. I don't know if that's. <laughs> I don't know if that's like your left sock or should be read as my left sock. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a good question. Shayna P and Talon B. Uh, so thanks to all of you who have joined us in the month of May on our Patreon. We love you so very, very much. Yes, thank you. Um, really, I think that's all. It's. Uh, I think it's just time to let the recap roll. While you're on Grigori's little hideaway, snatch whatever you can, because I'm sure he's got loads of things in there. And I get first pick of two of the things that you find. All right. Yeah, I'll take it. And inside are the seven medallions. We've got this group collected. TJ has finished his submersible. What are you calling it? The Undersea Gobbler. I, I think it's going to be uh, the three of us and Anastasia going in. But I think we should have Ori stay in the sub until we either need him for something or we have found his sister and are ready to get her out. You start to see the sickly red glow illuminating the water in front of you. And then in your run lights, the Argonaut comes into view. Do I see any dangers in here? As you hear the lights kicking on throughout the submarine, the door almost directly in front of you starts to slide open. And as it does, blood starts pouring out of this door and it starts to take the form of a very large humanoid shape and starts to move towards you. So I'm going to step to this thing and try and plunge a stake into the chestal area of it. And he lunges forward with his stake in hand and jams it into the chest. And as he does that, the creature reaches out with its right hand and you see that it just palms his face. And Jake, you feel blood starting to fill your nose and your mouth and pour down into your lungs. We find ourselves several hundred feet under the freezing water at the North Pole. The undersea gobbler is connected to the Argonaut. In the hallway of the connecting tube between the two, we have Anastasia, TJ, and Tass, and this large humanoid form made out of blood gripping Jake's face, and Jake trying to cough and convulse as this thing seems to be pouring itself down his throat. What are you two doing? 
I want to try to just dart forward with the spear and try to like sever that arm, try to break its connection from the main body and hope that disrupts what's going down his throat. Roll kick some ass. That's an 11. All right. What is your extra effect? Uh, Take less harm. So Tash, you leap forward and as you do, the tip of your spear starts to glow as you bring it down and it cuts cleanly through this arm and all of the liquid between the elbow where you have cut and Jake splashes to the ground. Jake, you can breathe again, but you have taken one point of armor defeating damage. It staggers backwards and you see that the blood splashes to the ground and then slowly starts to move back towards the creature. I'm going to try and tackle this thing and take its head off. Describe, explain, tackle. How does that get a head off? Um, well, I'm going to tackle it with my teeth around its <laughs> neck and take its head off by biting through its neck. I see. So like a, a normal, formal NFL tackle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> you, under, you understand? Riff with me here, TJ. I'm so sorry. Roll act under pressure. Will do. <laughs> sorry, I failed the, the riff roll. You did. Uh, that is a 12. All right. You are able to do exactly what you want. You leap at this creature and you wrap your teeth around its neck and go to bite down and nothing happens. There is no give, uh, but you are able to release and kind of jump backwards away from it as it swings at you and get back to a safe distance. Oh, thank goodness. Jake, you are on the ground coughing up blood, not your own. That's so icky. Yeah. Uh, okay, I am going to trade out the, put the stake away and just try and use the stun knuckles. If this thing is liquid, hopefully it's conductive to some degree. Uh, and so I'm just going to go try and knock it with the stun knuckles and see if it conducts. All right, Jake, roll act under pressure. Okay. Nice. Uh, 11 minus one cool 10. All right, so you jump forward with these stun knuckles and you slam them into the side and there's a very gross smell of blood boiling and heating up, but it doesn't seem to affect the creature at all. Yeah, yeah, it's gross. That makes me even more sick than you swallowing all that blood. Yeah, seeing this, I'm going to just try to jump back in front between it and them and just try to take another swing at the other arm, actually. You know, how I'm kind of picturing it in my head is taking a swipe with its arm up coming after me to get that arm to go flying across the room if I can actually hit it. So in that case, roll act under pressure to try to strike out at the moment that you want. Okay. That's an eight. Uh, so you can strike out as this thing swings at Jake, but it's going to connect, but you're going to get the hand off, or you're going to get the hand cut off before the impact, but the essentially blood splatter is going to travel back towards Anastasia, or you're going to be able to do it at the exact moment that you want, but the tip of your blade is going to get buried in the floor. Ooh, um, oh, I'm sorry, Jake. I have in my head that if this comes careening at you, you've got that shield to kind of smack it away. So I think that's what I'm banking on. Uh, Jake, you take two points of damage, not armor defeating, and Tash, you get the hand off and it splatters onto Jake's shield and Jake kind of slams it to the side and the blood goes art deco on the side wall <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't seem like we're hurting this thing does somebody want to check the room it came out of and see if there's like a control yeah i mean i'll keep it busy i'm at least hacking at it but stuff's still moving maybe if i just get it down to a low enough little piles it can't coalesce anymore i don't know i'm just gonna keep messing with it i'll do it okay so tj you're gonna go into the room that it I'm came out gonna of gonna check out the room that it came out out of yeah all right so you go into this room and it is a very small square and in the back corner of it is a vial behind a crackling energy field. I kind of want to blast it with the electro blaster and see if it can take the brunt of my electro blaster. Okay. Roll act under pressure. Hmm. It's a three. So you point the electro blaster at this and you let it loose and you see the energy travel at the electric field and it absorbs it all. Jake and Tass, you are in the hallway and there is a violent jolt of energy, like strong enough that you both feel the arm hairs stand up from the static energy. And TJ comes flying out of the room and tumbles across the ground and he's smoking slightly. Uh, TJ, you take three points of damage as the field releases back to you the energy that it had absorbed from your attack. Ouch. What happened? There's a field in there. Oh, God. I tried to blast it. It shot me back. Oh. As he is careening across the floor, I think I want to try to do kind of a roll near the monster and take one of its legs off out from under it. All right. Roll act under pressure. 
Oh, no. Uh, five. You roll and swing your spear and you catch the creature in its leg and it comes clean off. And then you realize there's a bit of a shadow over you as the rest of it, whole cloth, falls on top of you and starts to fill any opening it can find. There's got to be a better way to say (laughs) that. Uh, Tass, take one point of armor-defeating damage. Oof. All right. I want to go basically grab Tass by a leg and just get him out of there, like grab and drag. Okay. uh, Roll protect someone. Ten. Just shake me out by the ankle like you're trying to get my change. (laughs) Uh, what is your extra effect? Um, suffer little harm. So you are able to pull Tass out from underneath this creature, um, and it goes fairly flat on the ground, and you can see the blood from around the room starting to come back towards it. Um, so right at this moment, you are all standing in the hallway, the floor covered in blood. What was behind the energy field? Uh, some kind of vial. I don't know what it was, but it might be the key to this. Tass, you want to see if the spear will disrupt that energy field? Ooh, At I'll, least it's something cool and magical. Yeah, I'll, I'll try. Um, so I'll run in and not try to like hit this field, but just try to like tap it. Nothing happens. Dang it. Um, while he's running in there, I want to kind of take the shield and like put it down on top of whatever the core of that blood puddle was and like sit on it. Like whatever, whatever <laughs> seemed like the brain of this thing. I'm trying to like pin it to the ground and stay there so the rest of the blood can't get back to it. Um, I think that... The first thing that you notice starts to happen is that the blood starts to come up over the lip of the shield and crawl onto you if you are in its way. Oh, darn. Okay. Then I'll just kind of, oh, never mind, like step off the shield and yeah. grab the edge and yipe, 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 dive yipe. out and forward, roll away from it. Hey, yep. I want to look at this thing and open up my sight and see if this, if it tells me anything about like what kind of energy this is or if there's any weak spots, anything like that. All right. Roll investigate a mystery. Um, eight. You get to hold one. What can hurt it? It would have to be dispelled. This is a very powerful magic spell that is protecting this vial of blood. Oh, I don't think any of us can do that. Anastasia, do you know how to dispel something? No. Ori? Dad? Anybody? Dad? (laughs) Dad? (laughs) Daddy, please? (laughs) Do you yell for Ori? Yeah. He peeks his head around the corner. He can see you guys down that hallway. Yeah, what? Blood monster, vial, magic energy protecting it. Any idea how to dispel this? No, cool. but I know what it is. Oh, what, what, what is it? A homunculus. Okay, thoughts there? It's like a wizard's golem, essentially. It's just made out of stuff from them, and it just serves them. Uh, is there any way for us to deal with this thing without breaking that? No, you gotta destroy the source. F. Yeah. Okay, if we can't dispel this thing to get through, this thing's gonna keep coming, so maybe you guys get your asses down the hallway and see what's in the back there, and I'll just try to keep chopping it apart. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'll move further down in the direction where we think the, the rooms are that we need. All right. So let me sketch this out on your guys' map, what Jake sees that has changed. Okay. So anywhere here where I have drawn in green, that is new structure that exists that takes place of the old structure. Uh, if there is if there is a black door that has green totally covering it, that is a door that is not there anymore. And if it is a green door with a black square around it, it is now a door that exists that was not there prior or oh. one that did exist that's still there. Oh, OK. I see it now. So you can see that the shape of the inside hallways have changed just a little bit and that some doors are gone and some new ones are there as you go to your right. Copy that. So from that, where do you want to head, Jake? Um, I think I'm going to go for that one straight ahead on the left. Because as far as I understood it, we think the important stuff is way at the back. And that seems like it goes way to the back. So as you head down this hallway, you pass two doors on your right and one on your left. Uh, you get to the door that is at the end of this corridor. Uh, what do you want to do once you get there? Um, uh, so I'm going to gingerly open the door ahead of me. Uh, You put your hand on the handle and you take one point of damage armor defeating. Oh, dang. What is it? Like a shock? It is. It's a home alone thing where they (laughs) put the heater on the the heater on the handle. Uh, I'm going to take my shield in both hands. It's plastic and just bring it above my head and slam it down on that door handle to try and bust it off. Uh, Roll no limits. Uh, Eight. Okay. What is your consequence? Hernia. That's by life. Yeah, that's, that can't be a pre-existing consequence. Oh. That's just my existence. Monster of the Week insurance will not cover pre-existing conditions. Oh, no. Uh, minus one forward. So you slam the shield down onto this door handle, and it snaps cleanly off and clatters to the ground. 
Uh, I guess I'll put the shield back on and no element of surprise now. Just boot that door open. You kick this door in and it goes about halfway and then stops. How does it stop? Like hits a wall or like there's someone behind it or like it gets stuck on something? Uh, It stops like it slows down. Okay. That's menacing, yeah. My, I mean, my gut instinct is that there is someone behind it or something, so I'm going to give it another boot. Like, just if there's something behind it, like, just try and sidekick this door now to push it open, and if there's anyone or anything behind it, that it'll knock it back or squish it against the wall or whatever. Okay, roll no limits. I will. Big money, no whammies. Small money, some whammies. Six. Ooh. No money. Oh, five. I took my All whammies. Forward. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As you go to boot this door open, it doesn't budge, but you do hear another door open. It is forward and to the right, and you hear the familiar sound of blood sloshing out onto the floor. Oh, hell. Tass, you are back with this creature in the corridor trying to keep it here, keep it at bay. It has reformed and is starting to stand up. Okay, yeah, same kind of thing here. I'm uh, trying to keep a little distance and just take chunks off of it. Okay, starting... Uh, I think I want to try the leg again. That seemed like it was a pretty good payoff, even though it kind of hit me, but it went down and showed that momentum of hitting the ground affects it in some way. So I want to try that again. All right. Roll act under pressure. Yeah, boy, that is a 12. Yeah, you are able to do exactly what you want. You roll across the ground again and you cut its leg out from underneath it and it falls down to its hands and knee. TJ and Anastasia, you see the second homunculus start to form in the hallway next to where Jake is messing with the door on this room. I think I want to push past it into that door that it just came out of and see if I can find if there's a vial there. Uh, So roll act under pressure to get past the homunculus. That's a four. You go to get past the homunculus. And it sees you as you start to duck to go underneath it. And it gives you a hard kick that knocks you backwards down the stairs next to the wall. And you go tumbling down the stairs onto the first floor. So, Jake, you are at the door. I'm going to go into the room. You skinny yourself around this door into the room. And the first thing you have to do is take about three big steps up. And this room is filled with packed earth about three feet high. Um... Is there anything on top of the packed earth? There is not. I'm going to get on the comms. Uh, There's a room with dirt just packed three feet high. Does that mean anything to anyone? Something buried in here? Not it. Ow. Uh, No. No. No, man. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I am going to start moving earth around to try and figure out what the hell the purpose of this room is describe to me what are you doing like you're moving earth around like you're just kicking dirt what are you doing i like probably using my shield i feel like just to kind of like dig in an edge and like move swaths of dirt and see if anything's like shallow buried anywhere or you know i i have no concept of what this could be for except that something's under this dirt because it has to be under dirt all right so jake gets down on his hands and knees and starts to dig through the dirt TJ, you are at the bottom of the stairs, and you have tumbled into a large, wide open room. And hand um, me the map, and I will change what you see differently. Cool. And so, as you can see, the room is no longer centered. It is off-center to your right as you're looking at the map. Uh, and there are four doors inside of this room. I feel like I should go back up and help my buddies, because if I just start investigating around here, then I'm probably going to open up another door to another creature of some sort that's going to fuck us up or i might just find the thing that actually wins it for us (laughs) adversely to the worst possible thing is the best possible thing that's right i want to go to the door that is immediately to my right you head over to this door on the right and what are you doing you just grabbing the handle whipping the door open you know what i'm just gonna knock on the door see if i get a response so you knock on the door there's a brief moment and then you hear some movement Have you returned, my master? Yeah. I smell the lies on you, and I sense, yes, I sense my children are awake. You are an intruder. And behind you, a door slides open, and you hear sloshing. Tass, the homunculus has arisen again, and it turns and starts to walk away from you down the hallway where the other two have gone. What, am I too much for you? Um, I want to run up and try to just full on cut this thing in half at the waist. All right. Roll kick some ass. Ten. 
Uh, what is your extra effect? I think I want to do terrible harm. All right, so you leap forward and you cut this thing in half and it collapses into a puddle on the ground and you now have a moment in this hallway to breathe. Oh, come on, buddy. Don't go. Be positive. Okay, there was your moment. Blood. <laughs> that, was the moment. that was your moment you got. <laughs> you could have added more, but no, you wanted to do dirty puns. Yeah. Yeah, I think I want to look up now that it was kind of going around and see if I can see either of the boys. You see a door cracked open and Jake's feet inside of the room and you hear digging sounds. You don't see Anastasia, but you hear the sound of someone being hit very heavily against metal and there's no sign of TJ. From what direction was that sound of the hit? Down the hall and around the corner. I'm going to dart that way. Uh, You see Anastasia in the grasps of a second homunculus, which has just slammed her into the wall. Oh, boy. Um, Yeah, if he's doing that same thing, I think I want to try kind of an uppercut, like up through the legs and split this thing lengthwise. Roll protect someone. Okay. Uh, That's a 10. What is your extra effect? Uh, I guess I want to inflict harm. You are able to jump forward and bring the spear up and the blade cuts cleanly through and the creature parts in half and falls to the ground. Anastasia lands on the ground with a thump and starts to cough up blood. It seems like only magic can hurt him. Okay, I mean, I can try to keep disassembling these things, but we're not finding much. We're all split up. Jake, where'd everybody go? There's this room full of dirt. I'm trying to dig for something. I don't I don't know what it is, but it. I don't know why this room would exist if it didn't matter. OK, fair. TJ, can I hear him? Is that you can? He is right up the stairs. Uh, you've just heard this sloshing sound and you turn around and there is a third homunculus that has just come out of the north facing door downstairs. You good? No. And I'm going to start running towards the upstairs. Yeah, there is no problem. The stairs are right beside you uh, and you tear up the stairs and you see that they are standing on a very bloody floor. Anastasia on the ground coughing, uh, but you do hear the thump of the heavy feet coming towards the stairs below you. I got a third one behind me. Uh, So at this moment, the two on the ground are dispersed and there is one at the bottom of the stairs. I'm heading towards the stairs then if I can hear that and just same. I want to try to keep these things separated and splattered, just running back and forth. Okay. Uh, This one starts to come up the stairs and roll act under pressure. Ooh, seven. I had to math in my head. So you can slash out and cut the leg off of this one as it comes up the stairs and cause it to tumble back down. Uh, But by the time you get back to the top of the stairs, the other two are going to be reformed. You can get this one's arm off and it will keep coming, or you can cut this one in half so that it splatters apart. But you notice that the way that you're going to strike the blade, it almost looks like the blood from two of them is going to mix together. Oof. I don't know that in my head I would think that that matters, so I think I'm going to splatter it. So you slash across and blood splatters up onto the wall, and very quickly, all of the blood in this hallway, instead of trying to recollect together moves and pours down the stairs very fast past you oh whoa whoa shit so jake you are inside of this dirt room you have dug and dug and you have not found anything underneath um i don't know exactly what it was you were looking for but you don't find anything i don't really know what i was looking for like bones or a seed like I just, it seems like something like oh we've got to bury this thing for magic to happen like the dirt's Gotta be related. It's gotta be on the submarine for a reason. Yeah. Uh, Roll sharp. Oh, God. Okay. (laughs) Seven. Um, I think that that is enough. This is not an overly complicated piece of information. I think that as you are starting to stand up and dust the dirt off of yourself, you remember back to the Verkalakis, and when you were researching vampires, you discovered that there are vampires that have to sleep on their home soil. Oh, okay. I don't think that helps right this second, but I'm going to take some of that dirt. Uh, Yeah, so you're just going to get a pocket full of dirt? I Yeah, I don't think I have a better... I mean, I've got a backpack. Could okay. Get a backpack pocket full of dirt. Yeah, all right. So Jake is uh, scooping some uh, dirt into his backpack. TJ, you have uh, made it up to Anastasia. Tass is down the stairs, uh, and he you can hear him starting to come back up. But from down the hallway, you see the homunculus, the first one you encountered, coming around the corner towards you. Uh, can I push past him or at least get past him uh sure roll act under pressure cool even with my prudent natural speed that's still just a five 
you go to get past this homunculus as it comes down the hallway and it lashes out with its hand and catches you by the face. TJ, you take two points of damage, armor defeating. Ooh, I am unstable. And you feel your nose and your ears and your mouth and your lungs starting to fill with blood. Could I not? I mean, could I not feel those things? <laughs> no, no. In fact, masking means you feel them doubly. Uh... But it's okay, because you won't feel anything pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. Tash, you come up the stairs, and Anastasia is getting to her feet uh, and wiping the blood off of her dagger. And you see that TJ is in a very similar position that she was just in. He is being palmed by the face, and you see the blood flowing into him. Will you people stop getting grabbed by the face? And I'm going to try to dart in and hack that arm off. All right, roll protect someone. That is a 10. Okay, what is your extra effect? I think I want the impending danger to be focused on me. You jump forward and you cut this thing's arm off right where its elbow would be and the blood starts to flow off of TJ's face and he starts to cough and gag and blood starts to pour out of his mouth and the creature spins having dealt with you once before and it jams two of its fingers into your mouth. You take two points of damage armor defeating as it very quickly starts to pour down your throat. Jake, you come out of the room and TJ is on the ground on his hands and knees coughing up blood and you see that Tass is being grasped by this homunculus again uh, and its hand is just in his mouth and you can see it starting to pour through. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple things because I have a couple of really choice moves for this exact moment. So as part of I've got your back, once per mystery, if someone near you goes unstable, you can instantly stabilize them. Nice. So I'm going to stabilize TJ. I don't know how that manifests instantly, but it's just someone near you instant stabilize. I think that as you move towards him, you grab the stun knuckles and you jam them into his chest and it like shock paddles him awake. All right. And then <laughs> Shit. think I can use this move this time? You'll have to go through me. When a monster is threatening someone, you can step between them and challenge the monster. The monster must instantly target you instead. Yeah, so I think that you can use this move. Um, you can slam your shield into its arm and get it dislodged from Tass's mouth. Tass bends over and starts to cough up some blood. Uh, but this one is focused on you. Okay. Um... So as part of that move, whenever you intentionally and willingly put yourself in deadly harm's way for another mark experience. Okay. So I get one point off that. And then I want to backtrack luring this thing into the dirt room that I was in. Oh, all right. You guys are right next to this door. Roll act under pressure. Oh, yeah. Ten. Yeah. You backstep over TJ, step into the room, and the creature follows you. And it sloshes kind of around and through this door and is now in this room of dirt with you. So you have the homunculus lured into the room. Okay, I want to... This is a lot. Okay. There's a lot to do in one. I need to maneuver past it. I want to, like, roll past it, Um, because I'm trying to trap it in here, but the doorknob is gone. Oh, yeah. So what I want to do, basically, is, like, as it's, as it's coming at me, is, like, run my chain through the, kind of, the straps of the shield, and then as I go out the door run the ends of the chain through that hole so that I can hold the chain on the outside and it'll kind of pull the shield taut, blocking the entrance and pull the door shut. Okay. This seems like a big roll. Yeah. Uh, roll act under pressure. Okay. How good, how good did you do? Did you do so good? Two. Oh my um, God. We're hmm. going to die in the hmm. that's cold water of the North Pole. That's with my plus one ongoing because I've taken harm in this fight. Oh, my uh, God. I'm going to spend Willem's fortune to turn this into a full success. Yeah. All right. So with a point of luck, I think that you can accomplish all these things. Then you lure it into the room and you take the shield off as you start to roll and you tuck the chain through the shield and you get it nice and tight and then you just poke your finger with a link of the chain through the door step to the side and jump out the side and pull it the rest of the way through and you are able to pull the chain through and get it taut against the door so now you have anchored yourself to this door uh, but it is closed and sealed Tass and TJ and Anastasia, you guys are all on the ground, kind of clearing your systems of this blood as you see Jake roll out of this room and pull a chain 
through a hole where the doorknob used to be and just plant his feet. Tess, I'm not doing too well over here. Oh, and he is a, a little little bit of distance away, huh? No, no, he is right by you. Can we say he's just a little bit of distance away? Uh, oh, I know why. Cosmetic slide. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Uh, no. I think that you just medic slide a ridiculously short distance. <laughs> okay. Four or five inches. <laughs> Even yeah. better. Yeah, I want to try to patch up the obvious wounds. Okay. Uh, roll medic. Ooh, yeah. You get two points of healing with a nine. Okay, man. This is all foobar. We got to figure something out here, dude. You're the smart guy. What What do you got? I mean, anything. Um. Well, we already know that magic can hurt them. Yeah, but it's not putting them down. We have to take those things out or we just have to find who we need to find and get the hell out of here. Just thinking back and looking at all their actions and all my actions within the last few, I guess, almost seconds, if you think about it. Yeah. Um, could I figure out maybe what these things are attached to? If they're like to protect something or if they're controlled by something besides, I feel like that vial has something to do with it. Um, I mean, I think that just them saying uh, that it's a homunculus and, you know, that it works for a wizard, uh, that it's just here to be a guardian. It's just here to protect in general. Oh, uh, there was a guy downstairs. Oh, he said something about these are his children. We got to get to that guy and stop him. Will that take out these things if he goes down? I hope so. That's all I can think of. Uh, on the comm. Ori, does that sound like that tracks, or is that nonsense? It depends what those magic fields do. They might sustain the magic beyond the caster, or they might just protect the vials. Okay, I mean, that's as good as we've got, but unless we just try to kick open doors and find her. I don't know, I'll let you tell me if this sparks anything, because I don't want to just use my weird move willy-nilly. It just makes no sense, especially when there hasn't been a change or another reason for me to use it. Mm -hmm. But, like, the landscape in here isn't what we thought, and the situation isn't what we thought. So with this new information that there's somebody else and these things here, would that be enough for me to kind of focus down with a trust my gut on what the better course is? Trust your gut really specifically gives you where to go, correct? Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty narrow. So what are you trying it. to get towards? Are you trying to get towards the things you're looking for? Are you trying to get towards the source of these defenders? What are you trying to get towards? Uh, I think... Because that's going to get you a drastically different answer. Right. Help me with this, guys. The, what's in my head is the fastest way out of here, because this is going bad. And so I guess I don't know if that the answer to that is stopping the homunculi or whether it's grabbing the thing we need and bouncing thoughts there stopping the homunculus would make it a lot easier for us to go around the ship and find the things that we need yeah if we have the theory that when this guy dies the homunculi die and that's been the issue we've encountered on this thing killing him killing the homunculi means we can do the rest of the things we wanted to do yeah, okay. So yeah, I think that's what I want to focus down on is how do I put a stop to these with a method that we can actually employ. All right, roll it. That's a 10. So you start to play back the last couple moments in your head, um, seeing these things spawn out of these rooms, TJ being knocked backwards by the protective field around the vials of blood, your blade not doing anything to those protective fields. You know, the question you asked is, where can we go with what we know and what we can do to stop these things? And your gut response is, we cannot. You do not think there is any place for you to go to stop these because you are drastically underprepared when it comes to magic. Guys, I, I don't think that's worth it. We have to fight through two more of these things to even get to that guy. And then we don't even know what it is or what it can do. And we have to fight through. We're going to get ripped apart before we have time to do anything. We've got to we've just got to move. We got to move fast. We got to find her and we got to get out. Go for it. I'll hold this door. That's all I can do. If I let go, then we got three of them to deal with. Okay, uh, there's two more rooms pretty much right here. I'll stand right here and take care of these things if they come back up. You two check out these doors, huh? Um, I want to check out the door that's sort of adjacent to the dirt room. Then. Oh, okay. And then I believe that Anastasia will go to the other door. Uh, so what do you want to do when you approach this door? See if the handle works. Uh, it does not. There is a key code on it. I'm going to try the 131909 on it. It opens. What's inside? 
and I think it's worth pointing out that the code that TJ is putting into the door and the code that TJ put into the submarine to get in are the numbers that were on the back of the Argonaut patch that he found back in Hawaii. We didn't really say that when you use them at the door of the submarine. So just to clear that up, uh, that's where the series of numbers came from was the back of that patch that they found outside of the shack in the Shrieks. Right. Inside of this room, you see shelves on the walls. Each one of them holds a weapon. In fact, as you start to scan around the room, you see five weapons in this room. What kind of weapons are they? There is a warhammer, a short sword, a long sword, a dagger, and a whip that seems like it is made of links of metal. This looks like stuff that Strom would probably be interested in, so I'm going to grab them all if I can. Can I stick them in my backpack? I mean, you could get a couple of them, but I guess it depends on the size that you're grabbing. Mm. Well, then I'll put the dagger and the whip in my backpack, and then I'll grab the uh, short sword in one hand and the long sword. Oh, no, I'm going to get the warhammer in the other hand. All right. So um, you have a minus two ongoing, I think, because you are trying to carry something that is hard for people to heft with two hands one handed. Gotcha. Um, and then you have a sword in the other hand. Uh, and then you have just added this weight to your bag and you have a minus tough. Is that correct? Yeah, already. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, so you have a minus two ongoing while you drag these things around. Sure. Um, and then from the hallway, you hear um, Anastasia. Well, I think we found what you're looking for, boys. And she's standing in front of a door. And from out of the door that she has opened steps a young girl. She has dark skin and black hair. And her eyes are very dilated, and she seems like she is under the influence of some kind of drug. Okay, I'm going to start kind of backpedaling. TJ, grab her. Get her into the gobbler. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Uh, and as I'm coming out the door of the room I'm in, mm. I'm putting the war hammer up against the wall just opposite of Jake. So then that way, if he needs to use it, and I'm going to point it out, Jake, I got a hammer here for you. Just in case. And I'm going to let go of the hammer. Will oh, I you get my plus two? Have. Oh, I should have. <laughs> oh, oh you. yes. Yes, this is for you. Oh, my gentleman. Yes. Expect a nice dinner after this. Um, <laughs> and then I will guide Ori's sister towards the gobbler. All right. And Anastasia follows you. This very large homunculus starts to crest the stairway, Tass. And it is twice the size of the two that went down. Yeah, I think I'm going to try another parting shot as I'm backing up and, and try to get an arm off of it. Roll kick some ass. Yes, that is a 13. What is your extra effect? Uh, take little harm. So it comes up the stairs and starts to move down the hallway and it fills the entirety of the hallway uh, and it reaches out for you and you are able to get a slash off and you cut a couple of its fingers off um, and it brings the other fist forward as you do uh, and you take three points of damage, not armor defeating, uh, but you go tumbling backwards down the hall past Jake. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. We gotta go. And I'm quickening my pace with uh, Ori's sister to get her on. Yeah, and you guys are able to get back into the undersea gobbler, no problem. Okay, I'm going to let go, and I'll grab the hammer and try and kind of cover our exit, like get wait until Task gets back to his feet and just be like, all right, let's get on this thing. Let's get out of here. All right, so roll Act Under Pressure to let go of this chain and get down the hallway and grab the hammer and stay out of the clutches of this homunculus that is filling the corridor. What was it, Act Under Pressure? Yes. Seven. So you were able to let go of this and start down the hallway. You are either going to not be able to grab the hammer Tass is going to be left behind, and the homunculus is going to get there. Or when you let go of the door, the homunculus behind the door is going to join with the two in the hallway. I mean, honestly, that last one is what I was prepared for to happen. I think that I was kind of like, when I let go, this thing's going to become triple, but we're on our way out. So I think that's the one I'm going to take. So you start to head down the hallway. You grab up the war hammer. You help Tass to his feet. And you can see this other essence flow into this homunculus, and it rushes down the hallway, filling up even more space than three of them should. And it is right on your heels as the two of you start to move back towards the submarine. Just booking it, I think. So TJ, you and Anastasia and Ori's sister have gotten back into the undersea gobbler. What are you doing? I'm preparing the ship to leave in a quick manner. Okay. And what does that involve? I'll... Have somebody on the outer door, somebody on the inner door. As soon as everybody's past the outer door, then that person will close the outer door. And then as soon as they're past the inner door, everybody then will close it up, will blow off, and then 
we'll do a rapid rise, I guess. Who's at which door? The outer door shall be uh, Anastasia. The inner door will be Ori. So Tass and Jake, you guys are moving towards the ship and you see that Anastasia is right by the front door. Uh, she is waiting to close it and you can see Ori further in. Roll act under pressure to get into the submarine. Handily, 11. Uh, I got seven. So you can get from the Argonaut into the undersea gobbler, but them triggering the disconnect is going to happen kind of weirdly. And either it's going to pull a bunch of things, material things, out of the undersea gobbler into the ocean. The homunculus is going to get through and be inside of the undersea gobbler, or it's going to get hands on Anastasia. Uh, I think I'm gonna, we're going to lose some loot. It's got to wash some objects away. So as Jake dives through uh, Anastasia, she starts to close the door and then gets caught up with some of the blood coming through and she's trying to force it back out. And TJ jumps the gun and starts to pull away. And as soon as the disconnect happens, there is a rush of air from the back of the undersea gobbler towards the front door. And a number of things, scuba suits, tanks, some tools... TJ's backpack, the short sword, basically everything that isn't currently being gripped in someone's hand, all go out into the ocean. But then the doors are sealed, and you are away from the Argonaut. Go, go, go! And I'm driving us up to the surface. All right, roll, act under pressure. Four. Uh, that's a five, but I'm going to go ahead and use one of my luck, because I don't want them to shoot a torpedo at us. You were able to pull this away and pilot it back towards the location where you left Everett. The undersea gobbler breaks the surface of the water, and you are able to get everyone out. And Ori is holding this girl and just talking to her in a language that you don't understand. But you can tell that she is so happy, and she is crying. And he picks her up and carries her onto Mother Hen. What are you guys going to do with the undersea gobbler? Are you going to load it back up? Are you getting in this helicopter and taking the hell off? Well, I was going to go ahead and pull out my key fob, which is attached to the sea gobbler. Uh, you know, <laughs> of course it's not, it's, it's not attached. Not attached but, you to know. It. That's <laughs> um, a huge keychain. You <laughs> it's just a big line. Um, and I'm going to press a button on it and all the hatches on the sea under sea gobbler are going to close up and it is going to just bubble, bubble, bubble all the way down. And as it does, what? instead of making like bubbling sounds, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you have like on your key fob something that just essentially just shuts it off. Yeah, it's an auto shut off. Uh, yeah, all right. This I think is, that's, yeah, that's it's just, perfectly reasonable. It's just going to sleep on the bottom of the Did ocean. you build in Michael Keaton's Batmobile button for the armor to <laughs> all like clink well, around like, it? Hide uh, the tires so no, one, so no, no ruffians yeah. steal them. Now I'm going to make us some oh, just for my. us. God, I love that. We can't move in it or anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. It's just... <laughs> Well, time to go to bed. Beep, uh, beep, 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 beep. Yeah, I think that tracks. Uh, so you, TJ pushes this button. The undersea gobbler sinks to the bottom of the ocean, and you all climb onto Mother Hen. Everett lifts off, and the nine of you head back towards IPT. It's a fairly anxious ride back. There is a level of excitement, but there's also a level of, this thing is out there still. We left it behind intact. Is anything following us? Did we get away scot-free? Because that generally hasn't been your MO, that you've been able to get away cleanly, and it feels like you did this time. Is there anything you guys are talking about on the way back? I would absolutely sit with Anastasia. Um, I'm sorry we didn't get her. I wanted it too, but, I mean, you saw, we didn't We didn't really have a choice. It was stay and die at that point. I wish I could have seen more of that place, but well, I suppose it wouldn't be his place of safety if it wasn't heavily, heavily fortified. Yeah, all things considered... We're pretty lucky, and thank you so much. You put yourself on the line, and you didn't have to do that. And I, I wish there's more that we could say uh, that came out of it for you. I wish I could have done more. I wish we had known more going in. And she looks at the dagger in her hand that was entirely ineffective, and she puts it in its sheath. Uh, I would have the war hammer and be sitting near like Rev and Everett and trying to puzzle out what the hell this thing is because we've got to give it over now. So I want to know what it is to some degree before we have to hand it over to Strom. I think that they both take a look at it. I mean, yeah, that's not anything that I've seen before. Yeah, I mean, I guess I would spend the rest of the flight kind of like messing with it and seeing if anything interesting happened, like holding it and focusing and seeing if it like glowed or anything like that, just trying to yeah. elicit an effect out of it to see if it happened. No, nothing happens. I think I would like 
hand it to Tass at some point. I'd be like, if he's got a room full of weapons, maybe they were weapons of the other chosen and hand it off to Tass to see if it matters, if it does anything in his hands. No, you think? And I, I mean, I would pick it up. It doesn't do anything. It's real heavy and I'm very weak. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing, man. All right. I mean, if it's inert to all of us and our magic folk and we don't know about it, then maybe she won't know about it immediately. So you guys stopping at Chicago on the way back or are you headed back to Indianapolis straight away? Might as well. So as you head that way, Ori comes over. Thank you so much. This is... God, I can't believe we did it, but uh, this is only half the issue. Now we gotta vanish. Where do we know? I mean, we know that he has enough intel that he probably knows where the main office is at this point if he took Noel. Um, so I don't, you know, I don't think that's a great plan. Um, I mean, Ori, do you have any ideas? Places from your past that no one knows about that you'd feel safe? No, I mean, as far as I can tell, if I know about it, he knows about it. Yeah, that's fair. Um... Rev, do you want a roommate? I mean, we could try it. I mean, it's off the grid and untraceable and all that good stuff. It's the most secure place I think I know of. Yeah, I mean, when we first talked about this, you guys had said essentially make me disappear. I don't know if one of your regular haunts is really making us disappear and it's going to put your whole operation at risk if he can find me. You're just leading him to your door. Yeah, I keep using this. When we have a problem, what about trying to like track through and pinpoint somewhere to take them with trust your gut, like trying to think of like, what is the safest possible place in our realm of knowledge that we could take them and trying to kind of buckle in on that to get a clear idea? Yeah, I think so, that if it is the places that you guys are aware of and trying to figure out where to hide somebody, what would be the most secure, yeah, roll it. Okay. Good call, bro. And that is a 12. Without a doubt, you know in your head the safest place that you could put Ori and his sister Malia out of all the places you've been is Elnor. Okay, here's a thought. We have the teleporter. What about taking them to Elnor? Yeah. Do uh, we I, know how to open the door there specifically? Holy crap, that's such a great idea. I mean, I don't know that we have the number, but I figure we can figure it out. It's, you know, from what we could gather, it's like the next place over from us. Um, right. Like, right? That tracks on so many levels. Like, we could just fire it up and hit channel up. And you know, it'll be <laughs> Elnor. I've, that's that's the best thought I have. That's somewhere that literally almost nobody knows that we ever even went with, you know, a very small list of people that do and nobody else would really have a reason to go to. Like, that's that's it. That's what we got to do. OK, Um. so I think about the time that you guys finish this conversation, you land in Chicago. Uh, all right. I don't know who who wants to come with me. It doesn't matter to me. Um. I'll keep guarding the helicopter. I'll go with you. Okay, me and TJ will go take the Warhammer up. And before you can even ask me, I'll say she should be expecting me. Uh, he opens the door, <laughs> and the elevator's there. And you take the elevator up, and the door opens, and she is standing there. Well, we made off with a handful, but lost him at the very last second. So this is the one we got out with, and I'll hand off the Warhammer. Oh. You know what it does? Does it mean anything to you? It does. This is quite a rare artifact. And she holds the hammer in both hands, and... Her necklace starts to glow, and she releases the hammer, and it just floats there. And she touches the necklace, and then she touches the hammer, and her eyes light up. And you can just barely see that there are images flashing across her blank eyes. And then she snaps back, and she catches the hammer as it stops floating. I know that you were well aware that this was happening, but Grigori Nash was killing off the Chosen. This was one of their weapons. Oh, I thought it might be. Were there more? Yeah, but we, we lost them. How many were there? Uh, there were five. Oh, well, that counting the one that your friend has, as far as I know, that's all of them in existence. Well, he's going to get the rest of them back, I have to assume. They just kind of fell right outside his door. Well, I mean, they're not really any good without a chosen to wield them, and really only if it's linked to them. But it's a very interesting conversation piece. Yeah, seems like just kind of a sick trophy, huh? Yes. Imagine if there were only six T-Rexes left on the planet and you had one of their skulls over your fireplace. Boy, that's dark, but really good. Right. Okay. Well, so there's the hammer and I guess I owe you a favor. Oh, no. I think that uh, that makes us even. I will take that hammer for those uh, 
those charms. Oh, okay. Well, pleasure doing business with you. Yes, you as well. They did come in handy, by the way. Oh, did they? Yeah. Good. I think we got away with some stuff that we wouldn't have been able to get away with otherwise. Oh, is that so? So, TJ, you were sitting there as they're having this conversation, and you're kind of going back and forth watching Strom and Jake make this bargain, and your ears perk up, and you notice that your necklace, the Lucky Charm, is pulsing just slightly a green, and outside you hear, (coughs) Tass, you are sitting in the back of Mother Hen at the open hatch watching the city go by. You look back inside and you see Anastasia and Rev having a conversation. You see Ori flipping through his phone and showing Malia photos. And you see that Everett and Jingles seem to be plotting a course. And it strikes you how nice this moment is because everybody seems to be at peace. Then you notice that your necklace has this strange green pulse to it. And as you pick up the necklace and look closer at the pulse in the distance, you hear this wailing sound. And then you hear shattering. And you look down the long road ahead of you and you can see glass tumbling from buildings. And you can see lampposts exploding and stoplights crashing to the ground. And you're able to focus down and across the Chicago skyline, you see the Banshee screaming and heading straight for Mother Hen. The Crit Show is a Crit Show Studios production, edited and produced by Brandon Wentz with music by Jake Purley. You can find more information about us at thecritshowpodcast.com. To keep up to date with upcoming live shows, contests, and other special events, follow us at The Crit Show on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For even more weekly content, join us at patreon.com slash thecritshow.